So guys, my brother does home theater and he dropped off a crap load of TVs for me to fix. So expect a lot of TV repair videos coming your way. I got Funya TV that's broken. I got a Savinia TV that is broken. Uh, Samsung Plasma TV that is uh, has no power. I got uh, Vizio TV right here that has, I believe, no power. Uh, this is a Sony TV that has a defective picture. I hope it's not the um, LCD panel. Usually it's a T-Com board. But uh, yeah, expect some videos coming your way. If you guys are interested in those videos, just give me a big thumbs up. What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and I'm gonna show you how to fix, or hopefully fix, a Digital Lifestyles TV. This has no power. Well, it does have a red LED light. And when you hit power right here, when you hit power, you hear a click and then the light blinks and then the TV's just dead. So uh, we're gonna try to find out what's wrong with it. Usually if it has a red light on the um, front panel like this does, it usually means that you do have five, vo five volt standby voltage. Um, so the power supply should be uh, okay. So I'm thinking it could be something on the main logic board or maybe um, it could be still the power supply board. So let's go ahead and find out. Now before you get started with the repair, make sure your TV is out of warranty. You can try a hard reset by unplugging the power cord for about one minute and plugging it back in. Sometimes it fixes the TV. But if it's still defective, then unplug the power cord and proceed with the repair. So where all the ports are connected, this is the main logic board. Also the main video audio board, AV board. Uh, so this is the brains behind the operation, this board. And this board right here is the power supply board. This is the inverter board, and this is the other inverter board. And the inverter board powers the backlight. So if your TV turns on, you have audio, and you don't have brightness or glow on your screen, then it's usually the inverter boards that could be defective. Um, if your TV is completely dead, it has no standby light, no red light on the front panel of the TV, it, it can be the main logic board or the power supply board. So first thing I do is I overlook all the parts and see if I see any burned parts and then I, I can check the voltage. So, right, let's check the five volts and see if we actually have five volts. All right, so here is the cable going to the main logic board. I'm gonna put my black lead on a ground source and the metal plate should be a good ground source, like right here, that should be fine. And then my red lead, I'm gonna put on the pins so I got zero volts, zero, zero it says, zero. So even if the TV is broken, doesn't turn on, you should always get five volts, the standby voltage. Some TVs, it's 3.3 .3 volts. All right, so we're getting very low volt. It, we do have voltage, but it's very low. Well, not very low, but it's, it's lower than five volts. So there's something wrong with the power supply board because it's not five volts solid. Some TVs, it's either five volts or 5.1 or 5.2. But it, uh, if it's 4.75, then I would uh, definitely check the parts on the TV uh, power supply board. Now, if the voltage is going up and down, zero volts to five volts, then check the voltage regulator or the capacitors on the power supply board. Uh, so right here, I feel a swollen capacitor. It's bulged on top. And this is bulged on top, and this is bulged on top, and this is bulged on top. So we got C37 and C32. That's the location number on the board. C34 and C33. Let's see first the value on them. 1,000 microfarads, 25 volts. 1,000 microfarads, 25 volts. And 1,000 microfarads, 25 volts. 1,000 microfarads, 25 volts. You can put 1,000 microfarads, 35 volts. That would work, that's fine. You could go up a little bit on the voltage, but not um, not the value of the capacitor, um, 1,000 microfarads. And then you wanna squeeze the connector and unplug it. Never tug on the wire. If you tug on the wire, it, you're gonna rip out the wire from the um, connection. Now, if you don't have solder or solder iron, you know, or you don't know how to solder capacitors, then you may be interested in just ordering the board. The board's around 35 bucks. You just swap it out, it's real easy to do, and your TV should be up and running again. Uh, because solder iron may cost you $20 plus the solder, and the capacitor kit is around 15 bucks, so pretty much costs you the same as the board. 
That should work. So I'm going to put a little bit of solder on it to remove the solder. It sounds stupid, but it works. You just pull on it on the other side, heat it up and pull. There's one. So I got a capacitor, 1000 microfarads, 35 volts. So I upped it on the voltage. So now 35 volts can pass up to um, through this without it blowing up. If there was 35 volts running through this capacitor, it would blow up, which it's, it got swollen and it did. It's done. So I'm going to put my meter in capacitor mode and I'll show you what it reads. Let's see, microfarads. All right, so I'll put my black lead on the stripe side and I put my red lead on the other side. And see, look, it's reading 17 microfarads and it should be reading 1,000. It's definitely bad. And this new one reads 960 microfarads, 970. So that is definitely good. So if you re if it was reading uh, under 10% of its value, so if it was reading, um, I would say 900, then it's bad. And then on the board, you'll see a dark spot and then a white, it's a lighter color. So the dark shaded area is where the negative goes. That's the stripe side. So remember when you put that in. If you put it in backwards, the capacitor is going to pop. One time where I put the capacitor in backwards and it swollen, it swelled up and it popped. And all the other parts around it were fine. So let's go ahead and bend it outwards so the capacitor doesn't fall. And let's go ahead and solder that. And that's what you want to do with the other capacitors. It's basically the same exact method. And if you're wondering what kind of solder I use, I use uh, solder with lead. Yes, uh, lead is not safe, but as long as you wash your hands afterwards and uh, don't inhale the fumes, you're fine. Uh, the lead really helps with the solder joints, and you'll get really good solder joint long term. Uh, with the lead-free solder, the really the, the solder joints don't last as long. All right, let's go ahead and clip that. All right, so I replaced all these capacitors right here. Actually, uh, one leg fell off when I was trying to take it out. All right, so let's go ahead and plug it in and see if the TV is working. It's old school TV, but still, you don't have to buy another TV. Don't buy it. If it works, then you just save some money. It turns green right there. That's a good sign. Let's take a... Closer look. Right here, look at that. We got something came up on the screen. Let's hit the menu button. Boom. The TV works. If this video was informative, give me a big thumbs up. If you're interested in where to get the capacitor kit, click on the link in the video description below. And if you know anyone that has the same symptoms or a digital lifestyles TV that is defective or broke, Go ahead and click on the share button and share this video to them and click on the subscribe button if you want more how-to videos coming your way.